it's really tough. It's yeah, really, I can't really imagine. I, I can't imagine. I was saying this the other day. I can't imagine trying to break into comedy. Like, if you're a young comic working this, watching this right now, man, I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. It's too it's too saturated. I mean, dude, I run a business and I and I, I run a fairly successful business and I am one of the biggest comics in the world. And I am one of the biggest comics in the world. So Bert Kreischer is technically one of the biggest comics out at the moment. He has an insane world tour doing arenas, a massive comedy podcast with Tom Segura, and five stand-up comedy specials with the last three of them up on Netflix. So once again, technically a massive comedian but i think we can all agree that when it comes to actual comedy burt kreischer is nowhere near and will probably never be considered as one of the greats which makes uh, these type of videos a lot funnier to watch it's so funny a comic's brain is so different than a, than a pedestrian's brain and like what you know like i can't help i went pedestrian to a, is so funny by the way oh <laughs> like saying that <laughs> I said, I said to a woman, I said to a woman the other it's day. It's better than civilian. Yeah. That drives me crazy. It's like, we're not in the armed force. Let's react, relax. There's a lot of people that, that overuse that they really civilian. Do. And we all know that nobody loves Burt more than Burt Kreischer himself. And there is no doubt that he really thinks that he's way bigger than what he actually is. For example, non-ironically saying that he believes that a pedestrian's mind is way different than a comic's mind is completely insane and once again it shows you how he really feels about himself because you could argue that he was just uh, kidding around he is doing a comedy podcast at the end of the day which is fine uh, but it's all fun and games until he goes to a more serious platform and starts giving the worst takes and giving the worst advice ever to young comics which was actually pretty mind-blowing especially coming from him it's really tough it's yeah really, i can't really imagine I, I can't imagine i was saying this the other day i can't imagine trying to break into comedy like if you're a young comic working this watching this right now man i i wouldn't do it <laughs> no i wouldn't it's too it's too saturated it's too, man i got in when no one knew you could make a living doing comedy i got in i got into the gold rush of comedy like I got in when, like I'm doing arenas. I shouldn't do arenas. Like that, that, like there's. By the way, there's like ten of us doing arenas. There's never been an arena comic before. It was Dice. It was Dane. It was Steve Martin, and that made sense. They were the greatest. Mm. And now it's like me, Tommy, uh, Sebastian, Schultz, uh, Rogan, Chappelle, uh, DL Hugh. Chris like every Rock. there's a lot. Chris Rock. I mean, you you could. Throw a stick in, at, at a comedy club, and you're going to hit an arena act. I remember sitting in a in a in a hallway, and we were talking about our buses, and it transitioned into private jets. Like, what best? Like, what are, are you? How, what midsize do you like flying the best? Mm. And it, and that's comedy. That <laughs> that's comedy. That's just stand up comedy. That never happened. Now, I guess you got to at least appreciate Bert Kreischer being completely honest instead of trying to sell you the idea that anybody can be whatever they want to be because. Yes, life is hard. However, that coming from Burt Kreischer, shirtless, on Jake Paul's podcast is f***ing hilarious. Because, for example, if somebody like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk was explaining to you how difficult it was to start a business and how 95% of new businesses will, will fail within like the first five years, most people will listen to that and go, yeah, that sounds about right. That it sounds like businesses are super hard. That's understandable. But when it's coming from somebody like Burt Kreischer, who I personally don't find funny at all, and he himself has said that he essentially is a 50-year-old frat boy who went to college for over six years and doesn't even know how he passed, when that person tells you that what he is doing is extremely hard, so hard that you shouldn't even attempt it, that is completely delusional. And at that point, that's when you go, wait, hold on. I understand that what Burt Kreischer is doing is not the easiest thing ever, but the hard part about what Burt Kreischer is doing is not managing the business and making sure that the money is there. It's not marketing or negotiating the open mics. In fact, the hardest thing about what Burt Kreischer is doing is somehow figuring out how to be close friends with Joe Rogan, appearing on the Joe Rogan Experience for over 35 times, and being close friends with Tom Segura and starting a massive podcast with him where he essentially carries the whole show. Now that is very tough. The conversation used to be, swear to God, how do I get into the funny bone? 
Mm. And then now it's like, it's like, yo, I was talking to a comic the other day and he's like, your stage setup, how much does it cost? What do you travel with? I travel with five tour buses. I have, it's like 1.7 for a month is what I pay for my state. Like we're, it's, it's such a huge business that if you're a guy who just wants to make people laugh, one, negotiate the open mic scene. It's, it's such a huge business that if you're a guy who just wants to make people laugh, you have to one, negotiate the open mic scene, which is insane. Just getting out of an open mic scene and getting to the next level is crazy. That's like little baby turtles have a better chance making it to the ocean, right. making it to deep water than a stand, than an open micer does getting out of a comedy scene. Then you have to get into the clubs and surpass the drugs, alcohol, and that'll be just at the comedy clubs every weekend. And we haven't even got you into Hollywood yet. Now you got to go to Hollywood and try to pitch a show and see if you're actually likable. I mean, this is, there are so many hurdles to get through that then you go, oh, you would got to start a podcast. You got to have a social media presence. You got to have a social media team. Do you have a producer? Who's doing your content for you? Oh, by the way, your digital footprint needs to be this, and that's going to cost you $10,000 a month. Where's that $10,000 from? You're not getting it from stand up. I mean, dude, I run a business and I, and I, I run a fairly successful business and I've, and one of the biggest comics in the world. And I'm still going like, I'm checking, making sure I'm paying my overhead. Like, I, it's crazy. Is, is there and again, I don't know why Bert Kreischer is making it sound so complicated. I don't know if he's uh, trying to show them that he's super involved in the business side of things. But something interesting I noticed when I was watching the podcast is that Jake Paul is essentially the Bert Kreischer of boxing. Because Jake Paul is making a lot of money. He is internet famous. And he is very successful at it. But among real boxers or real fighters he is not considered again a real boxer or, or a real fighter which is not a bad thing it's just a different uh just a whole different thing and i think it's kind of similar for burke kreischer in the comedy world he is technically in terms of money up there with the goats at the moment like sebastian fluffy joe coy he is up there in terms of money with them but in terms of comedy i don't think anybody really uh, mentions Burt Kreischer or brings up one of his bits when they're talking about a funny stand-up set. I mean, just recently on Joe Rogan's podcast on a fight companion with uh, Brendan Schaub, Eddie Bravo, and Brian Callen, for like two to three minutes, they were talking about how there have been no funny movies made in the past couple of years, which was hilarious because they were clearly ignoring uh, Burt Kreischer's The Machine movie, which was released uh, this year, I'm pretty sure, and there was no mention of that movie whatsoever because... It wasn't the greatest movie. Videos with no soul. The, the only goal is to get views. Yeah. And they figured out the, the numbers and all the algorithms behind it down to a science. And uh, it's really it's really ruined, ruined the platform, honestly. I have, a, I have a hard time. I have a hard time with the YouTube algorithm. I mean, even with Two Bears and, I, you know, I, it's it's my it's me and Tom's podcast. But Tom was like, you know, we could, you can get more views if we change the thumbnail. And I just was like, I don't know, man. I just like, there's like, and it's like, uh, you got to do like a crazy face, and then yeah. the title's got to be. Uh, and part of me is like, that's not even what happened. But yeah, it's it's all about it's all about clickbait, and then the first thirty seconds to minute of the video is just this overload of stimulation. And now I thought it was very interesting how Bert Kreischer decided to expose uh, Tom Segura like that because. A lot of Two Bears 1K fans did agree that the new thumbnails that they changed to recently were pretty bad. And Burt Kreischer was essentially saying that he wasn't on board with the idea of uh, using clickbait titles and changing the thumbnails just to get more views. Which, I guess that's fair. I mean, if you do look at Burt Kreischer's uh, channel, the his main channel on YouTube, he doesn't use that style of thumbnails, which is fair. And honestly, that uh, change was a little bit weird. Even a lot of other people, like the fighter and the kid, uh, YouTube channel started copying that trend, which was uh, not the most popular. But the way that Burt Kreischer was saying it, it was almost like he didn't really care about the show and about the views when that's clearly not true. I mean, Two Bears One Cave is still massive, and I'm pretty sure it uh, helps to sell a lot of tickets for his uh, massive arena tours. And Burt Kreischer doing arenas has elevated his insane ego to the point where he thought that it was okay to ask Louis C.K. if he actually wanted to open for him at the fully loaded tour but yeah it's uh so it, it is i like i personally we do a fully loaded tour every year mm -hmm. where we bring we did it with a tell last year we do yeah we bring like 10 comics do tour buses right open invite 
by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put out an offer. When we start doing offers, I'll put out an offer. I, I, have, I, well, have, I have two. I have two. Hang on. Don't, don't, don't say no. I have two. Yeah. I have two that I think you'd really like to do. That would be really fun. And I think we'd all have a blast. I can't do it, though, because the show at the Garden is going to be my last show. I mean, I'm stopping after that. No. Yeah, because. Wait, what do you mean? Well, because, first of all, it's going to be live. It's going to be live on my website. You're stopping stand up after it? Well, for at least a, a year. I'm taking a year off, I think. What? But also, because I'm not going to have any jokes. I'm going to have burnt all the jokes that are going to be seen on the special on the 28th. Yeah, but you, Louis, so I can't tour after that. I have you, to shut down. All you got to do is 15 minutes. I got. I don't have fifteen minutes Me, of jokes. Shane, no, I need a break. We'll, we'll party. We'll party our off. We'll party uh, you our know, off. Look, but that's like going back in time. Now, if you're one of the few people that doesn't know who Louis C.K. is, you might be thinking, "How nice of Bert Kreischer to give an old guy the opportunity to make some good money for fifteen minutes of stage time." However, if you do know who Louis C.K. is, then hearing Bert Kreischer asking him to open for him at the fully loaded tour has to be the funniest thing ever. Obviously, Louis declined in a very polite way and actually gave Bert Kreischer some good advice on how to approach arena tours after seeing how excited Bert Kreischer was uh, to tell him that he was doing arenas. Really kind of sage things. I used to do arenas and stuff, all you that You told stuff. me that. Yeah. You go, you're doing arenas. I said, yeah. yeah. And you go, it's for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The audience is not, it's not, it's fun. Like, wow, look, I'm in an arena. But the audience is like, I can't even see him. <laughs> You're, you're, you're walking to see a comedian. You shouldn't have to walk up a big cement ramp <laughs> and like sit in a fucking bleacher seat, holding a, a cup with a basketball player on it. Like Duncan, like, and you're watching him really on a, like a TV above your head yeah. and he's this big and there's people talking. That's a show. Tampa. People, I'm going to be at the Emily arena, February 17th. Yeah. I think a comedian who gets an opportunity should, to do arenas, you should do it once. It's, and again, it is for you. It's also this, a way to yeah. make a shit ton of money. You make so much that you can fly in private jets and it's actually economical suddenly, like cheaper <laughs> to fly in a jet because yeah. you can do more shows. You can do like five arenas in five nights. It's, but it's insane. It's a, it's a, it's, you're not, you have no, there's, there's no friction. There's no, it's just life gets crazy. Yeah. You should do it once. I'm doing, this is my arena because you're, tour. But then the next tour you should do theaters. Cause if you're a fan, you watch the guy every time he comes to town, you know, if you're in yeah. Minneapolis, you see him come to the Acme every year and then you go, he's at the Pantages now. That's cool. He's at and then the state theater. And then he plays the Timberwolves stadium. I'm playing there. And you go there as a fan, you go, huh? Okay, good for you, Bert. I'm happy for you. But the next year, if he's at the Timberwolves, you don't see him again there. You'll see him at the Pantages every time he comes, yeah. your favorite comedian. I, this but you're is, not going to go see him at the arena every year. Tom did his arena tour, was coming everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing Tops Off as my arena tour starting in February. And then I and then I think, I, think, uh, I would love to say I'm done for a year, I, but I don't have that brain. Now, the Louis C.K. episode on Two Bears, One Cave was very interesting, but what he said, the advice that he gave Bert Kreischer when it comes to the arena tours was actually pretty spot on because if we take a look at Bert Kreischer's numbers, if we take a look at the tour, compared to the top selling comics like Sebastian, Fluffy, or Joe Coy, Bert Kreischer essentially needs to do double the amounts of uh, shows to in order to sell the same amount or similar amount of tickets and if you look at the stage setup it almost feels like he's doing arenas just to say that he did it because it just seems like he could easily do a few shows in each city doing uh, theaters instead of one big show in an arena and i could be wrong but i feel like he could sell a similar amount of tickets if he did multiple theater shows instead of one big arena which kind of shows how he approaches things and just wants to make them as big as possible same logic with the movie if he would have shot the movie the machine movie with a lower budget less expectations of putting it out on movie theaters he could have released it on online just to his fans and and uh not have the pressure to make all the money back but since he went the Hollywood route instead, they have to shoot a, a huge movie with a big budget and then release it on theaters and have it compete with actual huge movies, which I don't know. I feel like he just did that to say that he had a movie coming out on theaters instead of uh, what everybody else is doing, like Bill Burr and Louis C.K., who have actually done it in the past. And the funny thing is that most recently, Burr Kreischer on a Two Bears, One Cave episode, he himself acknowledged that uh, doing arenas was not the best thing to do for a long for the long term and that he needed to schedule some clubs here and there and and i i gotta be honest with you as a fan 
I'm grateful. Yeah. Like there is a delude and a, 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 a delude. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 there's a, a thinning of your talent when you do bigger, bigger, bigger venues. Mm-hmm. Like a, as you do an arena tour, you have to, you're forced to go back to clubs to find out what works. Yeah. If you just stay in arenas, you're, f- you are, but you got, it, you also, if you're doing an arena tour, you should schedule clubs in the middle of that tour. Yeah. It keeps you honest. It really does. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I mean, clubs. I, do. I just mean like if you're doing this tour and you just do massive venues, a good thing to do is schedule ones that are not that size. Yeah. I think he probably forgot about that conversation because he went on the uh, fully loaded uh, cruise out, out at sea, I, I believe it's called, and then is now back on a tops, tops off world tour or something like that, which goes on, which is starting this month and goes on until next year it's just completely insane i don't i really don't know how he does it but uh that just shows you that he doesn't really care and look you do have to respect the hustle it's simple economic supply and demand there was a huge demand right after what happened in 2020 where people wanted to be out and see see comedy in person and bert kreischer was there to supply all of those markets so he was essentially working overtime and covering everybody's shift people that got sick and couldn't make it back people that got canceled and people that were too busy building their own comedy club not only that but he's also been putting out a new comedy special every two to three years and they're not good at all they're really not good which clearly shows that he's not doing it for comedy or to be the best he is just uh, capitalizing on the massive demand so tom calls me and goes it sucks you're not doing oddball i go i know this is a lot of money to leave on the table I go, it's only two thousand dollars a week and he goes huh i agree it's only two thousand dollars a week he goes wait is that what they're paying you i go what are they paying you and he goes mind you he's my best friend he goes i don't, I don't want to tell you and i said what do you he goes i think it's gonna f- up our friendship now there's a moment where you have to realize is your friendship gonna last realizing where you are in life and how far below you are as another guy (laughs) so i said to myself if he's making 10 grand a weekend 20 grand a weekend i can wrap my head around that he's bigger than i am so i said tell me how much you're making and he goes are you sure i said yeah i've already decided it's not going to affect our friendship he goes 20 grand a show i go you're a show i go we were doing like six shows a weekend i was like and then i just i realized how where i was on the pecking order of stand up and where I was in the entertainment industry. However, it's only fair that we do call him out when he's being delusional and says a lot of wild stuff, like he said recently. Now, this will be my last point, but for example, when Bert Kreischer says that the market is oversaturated and and because of that, new comics shouldn't even bother trying. When he's talking about the market being oversaturated, he's talking about his own market. So the market for his style of comedy, which is not the most complex or the hardest to do is i mean you have a lot of bird crashers online that do what he does so yes that market is most definitely oversaturated however if you're an actual comic if you're talented funny a funny person you can definitely make it it's uh it's almost like the music industry nowadays where like if you make a good piece of content something funny you can be discovered and you can make it out there without needing the traditional ways and it's funny that jake paul didn't call him out on that because jake paul himself prove that you don't really need the traditional route to become something that's already out there when it comes to jake paul he is already a professional boxer and makes tons of money but didn't have to go through the traditional route so when it comes to stand-up comics you might not need to do the clubs the open mics and get passed by somebody and hopefully they think you're funny and all that stuff maybe you can avoid that yes you do need to work in that skill and practice in front of people but maybe you could get get that somewhere else so once again i do think Bert kreischer was a little delusional uh when he was talking about uh new comics not being able to make it in the comedy world and how he is the biggest comic in the world but let me know what you think in the comments below leave a like and subscribe to support the channel this like if you didn't like the video but that is all we have for today see ya